Hey, and welcome to another episode of Rich Chinese Let's Square Theatre Podcast with Limmy. He's come back. It's great. Um, look, we're still doing Kickstarter for the filming of the next series of the podcast. It's it's reached its target, but the more money we can earn, uh, the less we will have to ask you for in the future. So it'd be nice to get to a point where we pay for some of the series 13, which will be coming up in the spring. Uh, and if you want to get a copy of the Christmas Emergency Questions book, the only way to guarantee you will get that by Christmas is to buy a copy from the Kickstarter. So go to gofasterstripe.com slash Kickstarter and you can join in with all the fun. Um, and uh, we are shortly going to be releasing an Emergency Questions app. It should have been out by now, uh, but um, there was a picture of Hitler being poked by a finger through time on it somewhere and uh, so it got withdrawn uh, but we're resubmitting it without that picture it was anti-Hitler so I think that means does it mean that Ian Apple is pro-Hitler I don't know what it means uh, but uh, Chris Evans not that one is already unable to ever get anything printed by Vista Print ever again because he tried to get a postcard of that printed. so it's causing us lots of problems that <laughs> it's anti-Hitler he's being poked because he's bad he was bad it's not really a fit punishment, but it's something. It's just something. It's all we can do from this vantage point is to poke him through time, isn't it? That's all we can do. Anyway, it might be up soon. Uh, so if you... <coughs> it's only on Apple products, I'm afraid. iOS at the moment. Um, though we're looking into uh, getting it onto Android. Um, uh, go to the App Store and look for emergency questions, and it might be there right now. Who knows? Anyway... Come and see us record these shows in the Leicester Square Theatre from October the 16th to November the 27th every Monday. LeicesterSquareTheatre.com for tickets. Let's sit back and enjoy the podcast from Richard Herring at the Leicester Square Theatre with Limmy. I've just forgot where I was for a second at the end there. Okay, bye. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Leicester Square Theatre. Please welcome a man who is still very much in his 40s. Very much so. It's Richard Herring. Oh, yeah. Hello. Hello, London. Hello. Oh, lovely to be here. Welcome to Richard Herring's Leicester Square Theatre podcast. Uh, I was uh, in Lazy Town uh, the other day. And I was talking to Sporticus from Lazy Town. Remember Lazy Town? He calls it Rahelis to us. I don't know if that's going to catch on. The girl from uh, Lazy Town is now about 26, so. Good news. Uh, so, um, not that I Googled it. Uh, so, um, welcome to the show. It was the wig, really, wasn't it? The wig was good. So, um,. Uh, <laughs> welcome to the show. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm 49 years old as we record this, but uh, due to the magic of the passage of time, the people who are listening to this, I'll be uh, either over 50 or dead. That is, uh, that's the magic of the passage of time. Uh, so I can't quite believe uh, I'm going to be... Fear- I haven't really thought about uh, turning 50. When I turned 40, I, I went crazy, right? I had a pros- proper midlife crisis, uh, went out, got drunk, behaved appallingly, um, but... I just hasn't even. I don't think I've really processed the fact I'm turning 50 in two days' time uh, from now. It's because now I'm 50 uh, and I've got a family. I've got some actual stuff to worry about. So uh, <laughs> it's uh, some responsibilities which I didn't have back then. We you know, but I can't, ten years have passed since I turned uh, 40. I can't believe that. It's, you know, I've just got over the existential dread of being 40, and now I've clicked my fingers and bang, another ten years have disappeared into the ether. And what I got? What have I got to show for it? Oh, a wife and a child. Fucking great. Uh, <laughs> Some, uh, some success in my career, big deal. Happiness, fuck off. Uh, so, uh, no, very much. It's uh, having a lovely time. We as uh, we do, uh, we're we're moving this week as well. I mean, I, it's really it's like I'm turning fifty, and then someone's gone. Yeah, you're not allowed to live in London anymore, mate. Uh, so uh, you have to leave. You've got two days to get out. So we're moving to the countryside uh, on uh, Friday. Yeah. Hooray! That's, is that are you a fan of the countryside or of the of the day of Friday? Yeah, Friday. <laughs> I love anything with Friday in it. I always eat in TFI Fridays because uh, I love Friday. Yeah, we're going to Hertfordshire. So the next time I do some podcasts, I mean after next week's show, obviously, uh, it will be 
I'll be living in the countryside. It'll be a very different, and I'll be 50. It'll be a very different uh, experience. Uh, I hope you will enjoy it. I'm t you know, might as well be dead. Um, <laughs> so last crack on. Uh, my guest this week, he last appeared on the Rich Change Less Square Theatre podcast uh, in September 2015. It's about two years ago. It seems longer. Uh, and uh, he's a very normal man. He's got a very normal <laughs> face. He's probably best known <laughs> as the Cockney in Pompidou. The, remember that? The Pompidou show, the Matt Lucas vehicle. Uh, we please welcome his Limmy, ladies and gentlemen. It's Limmy. <laughs> Limmy. Hello. Come and sit down. Pull up a chair. Thank you very much. Is that working? Hello. Yeah, there's it. Thank you very much. Limmy. It's Brian. Brian Lemon. Uh, so you were a cockney. Why did you, how did they get a job? I know there's no sound in Pompidou. Yeah. But you can't come down here doing our cockney parts. That is very offensive. Well, uh, Matt Lucas asked me yeah. to do Ma that, that uh, Pompidou is a kind of um, pingu sort of thing. It's, well, it's a kind of like. <laughs> is that kind of thing? So that, there's, that's, that's like the, the second thing that I've, I've came doing. My big break yep. uh, for the other, the other thing was... Was the other um, thing the Less Square Theatre podcast? The oh, aye, there's that, yeah. but I mean like the, on the telly. Okay, yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean like the uh, okay, broadcast much. telly. Okay, yeah. The other big break was uh, the IT crowd. Yeah, you were a window cleaner. Whereas window. a window cleaner going like <laughs> <laughs> So for Pompidou, it's like... <laughs> um, aye, that IT crowd thing, I got asked to... Um, uh, Graham Linehan, he liked like the first series of Lemmy Show, and he got in touch with us and uh, like via my, my agents, um, <laughs> London agents, and uh, um, he said, uh, "Do you want to be in the IT crowd?" And I hadn't watched it. I hadn't really watched. I'd seen it on the telly, but never actually sat down and went, "I'm going to watch this." Yeah. And and I knew that like Chris Morris was on it for a bit, and Noel Fielding was on it for a bit, and I thought. This, this is what it'll be like. It'll be like, I'll be maybe like one of these kind of recurring characters. Not to not replace like the, the top three, yeah. but you know, one of these other ones. And I thought, well, what could this be? And, and I got the script and I looked at the pages and it says, um, aye, it's a kind of um, a, a Glaswegian that you can't make out a fucking word he's saying. <laughs> is that right? Brilliant. Uh, so that, that, was, that was my big break. Yeah. So I sold it. I sold it. <laughs> What, did you, in Pompidou, you just you didn't act, you didn't have to speak though, so it didn't matter about the accent. Can you do a what? Cockney accent? Cockney accent? Yeah. I. Um, that's not very good. That was <laughs> very, very <laughs> Scottish. Very You're right. Yeah, that's good. Everything all right? I find that as a Londoner, I find that very, very offensive. You trying I'm to do very, my I'm trying sorry, to do my sorry, accent? Sorry. That's awful. I would never do anything like that. <laughs> so. Um, Nice to have you back. On Thanks you go, for, on you go. Thanks for coming down again. Else, and yeah. we got you a hotel. You're not going to not going to do it. We could have got... Hello! <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, this is how I'd have done the Glaswegian guy. Hello! The guy's in the IT crowd. No, no. What? No, it's actually a bit more offensive. I'm yeah. looking forward to... Uh, <laughs> I'm looking forward to you going to the Fringe in, in August. You'll tell me you're going to the Fringe in August. And <laughs> make sure you get a nice welcome, right? <laughs> you get away with it in Edinburgh, though, so that's, that is kind of pretty much English here anyway. They love it up there, love it, they love it up there. Um, you st we've got your hotel, because we've got probably paid for you to come down standard class from Glasgow on the train. Yeah, yeah. Paid for you to go in a hotel. I noticed on Twitter you were making uh, porridge in a cup for your dinner. I will. <laughs> so. I thought... You, you said, you said um, when you book your train and hotel, can you keep it within this uh, amount of money? And I did that, um, <laughs> so that I could only afford standard class train <laughs> and uh, travel lodge. And I thought, I, didn't even, I, I don't even think I could afford to put breakfast on the travel lodge, so I thought I'll keep it within that. Would they give any breakfast at the travel lodge? <laughs> I know, but I thought, right, I'll, I'll maybe get breakfast. I thought, no, I'll save myself a tenner yeah. if, I don't, if I don't get it. I thought, I'll get breakfast somewhere. And then when I just got to the hotel, I thought I could actually just nip around the corner to uh, one of the shops, get a packet of porridge, and then I could make myself dinner because I haven't had my dinner yet. <laughs> um, pour it in a cup. I thought they've got a cup in the hotel room, they've got a cup, not a bowl, and a teaspoon like for when you're making coffee. 
And um, so I poured the, the porridge oats in there and the boiling water in there. I never had any salt. I use salt, no sugar, but not even any salt though. No. So just plain and a wee bit of milk on the top of it. And, um, and that's my breakfast tomorrow as well. <laughs> breakfast in the travel lodge would cost, I, I think it said about 12 quid. Right. That, uh, 184. <laughs> and I'll have plenty of porridge left. You can take the porridge for, up, for, the, for the train back up the road, actually. Yes. <laughs> Just in case they run out of porridge in Scotland as well. You can leave us. <laughs> Don't get any chance of that. <laughs> <laughs> we should do that kind of thing the whole thing, but fucking. Don't get any chance of that. Oh. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, I'm sorry we didn't. Uh, I, I should have said we could, uh, we could have paid for breakfast, I feel. <laughs> No, it's nice. It's nice. It's, ni it's nice and filling porridge. I do, but I do on tour. I do on. I do exactly the same thing on tour. Because um, I don't. I resent. Well, I also, I, when I'm touring around and you're staying in hotels a lot, just going down and having a full English breakfast every morning just makes me feel like I want to die. You know. So I'll just get like a little one of those porridge pots that you can pour. They, they cost a bit more. You know, those little. Kind right. Of, you pour I the water in, it's got milk in it already, and then you stir them up. All oh, right. Well, I'd really liked that. Just after like, a book tour, and that was like, about a yeah. month and a half. I'd gone about I'd fucking travel lodge, travel lodge, travel lodge, and it's the same breakfast, the yeah. same everything, same picture on the wall in all the rooms, and everything. Yeah. Again and again and again. I like that. I love that yeah. fucking routine. I love that, like, boring as fuck kind of life. And, um, <laughs> every morning, the same fucking, like, granola, and then you get your uh, scrambled eggs and all this shit again and again. And again. <laughs> it's nice, it's nice and everything, but again and again and again, but. I fancy fancy the wee change. A wee bit of porridge when yeah. they fucking salt it in a cup. We'll try and find you. We'll try and send someone out to get you some salt during. No, the... it's fine. It's fine. Yeah. I'm fine. Are you honestly, sure? I am alright. I'm alright. Okay. Thanks. Well, I just want to make sure you're as happy. <laughs> so it's gonna be. It's gonna yeah. be fucking finished in about ten minutes. <laughs> it's good porridge. Well, no, it's important talking about porridge. Um, I've been reading your new book. That's your lot. That's your lot. I really like, I've, when I loved your first book, I really like, I, I kind of like the economy. That's basically why it's called That's Your Lot, because all these stories are very, is that right? They're very quick. Kind of, and they, they end the longer, well, they're all kind of longer, they're all longer than the stories and Daff, uh, right, Daffy yeah. stories, but it's the kind of stories that, like, I was trying to do all these punchline -y sort of things with yeah. Daffy stories, because I come for a, a sketch writing background. <laughs> it's like a fucking wank here, man. <laughs> it's very much a sketch writing background. So I was always trying to have a wee punchline, a wee joke, a wee yeah. twist at the end or something. But I read some other stories by an, art, uh, I was about to say an artist, um, a writer called uh, Raymond Carver. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cunt. Um, and his story just seemed to just, to just end. Yeah, yeah. Just kind of like there. And, and I, I didn't like it at first. I started to like these stories. It just that's kind of like, that's your lot. And, yeah, I, and yeah. I felt like writing stories where you're not really thinking about, oh, it doesn't have to have a, uh, you're not thinking yeah, so yeah, much about a catchphrase or a twist, or it doesn't have to be funny or good or anything like that. It's uh, <laughs> really, really frees you up. I really like it because I think it's, they're sort of, they're, 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 you get the very, uh, you get the tension going very quickly in all of them and they're, you all want to, you want to find out what's happening and what's going on. And you know, I've read about half of this, this book and they're all this kind of, you're very good at kind of <laughs> And then I've you're got time to read the whole thing. Nah, that's I'm moving later. <laughs> I'm, moving I'm saving some up for bedtime. Right. They're very good. Read them on the loo. They're good. Good, that's, that's I'm not going to read the rest of it. it. A lot of people come on here and only read half the book and then I don't go back to it. I'm reading the rest Did of it. Did you read the first half? Yeah, I've read or the just like here, there and... I've just, it's on my Kindle, so I've just read, the, I'm reading them in order. So well, that's good, because yeah. uh, I put out a good ones at the start. So oh, yeah, they're nice. good. Sorry. <laughs> but they're very, you, you, you're very good at building the scene immediately. It's really brilliant writing and I kind of like the brutality. Some of them just end sort of brutally, like bang, they're gone. You, they're building up and then go, oh, and this is what happened. Uh, you yeah, know I mean, it's, it's... It's grammar, if you read grammar. Uh, no. That's funny, because that's in the first half of oh, the book. Oh, you know, I, I have, I have, that's, that's, the that's the one I'm talking about. That's the one I'm talking about. I thought you said no, grandma. I thought you said grandma. I have read grandma. I've read grandma, yeah. The ending of that, I, I yeah, really... Yeah, no, it's brutal. I, I really enjoyed the ending of that. that that's, I love it. I was pissing myself. It's horrible. It's, um, I'm not, I'm, I, don't worry, I'm not here to talk about my book. No, actually, the, what's great about my book is... Uh, <laughs> but when I, when I wrote the ending of that, it felt like sending a fucking dodgy yeah. tweet that you know this is going to... 
like I'm I'm fucked. What, you know, I'm, I think it's that's just that's just suicide. But um, I think I really it's, it's really good because it, you, that one. I was really I was reading that on the tube on the way here, and I was pissing myself at all the. It's all about the guy, a, a guy who corrects people's grammar in emails at work. Right? I kind of grammar, well, but it's just really people. funnily. It's just really well observed and funnily done, and that kind of person and. and the character I always imagine of you in most of these stories, getting annoyed by someone correcting Aye. people's grammar. Yeah. And then, yeah, the end of it is just like... <laughs> it's Aye. just like it blows up in the face. You find the, the reason why he's dead. You have, to, you have to read it. I've no problem. Yeah, have you got any spoiler. books uh, for sale? When no, no th there are some. My book, my book Emergency Questions, uh, is on sale. <laughs> GoFasterStripe.com slash EQ. We can put some of yours up on uh, no, GoFasterStripe. Sorry, 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 it's all on Kindle now. I'd like to, you know, I'd like to hold it up, but it's all on, it's all on e-books. I, I was going to, I was going to bring it. I thought, oh, fuck it. I mean, the last <laughs> time I was on, I had Daffy stories before I did the tour, so yeah. I thought oh, this is a chance to first chance to read out a story. But I've just been doing it for like two fucking months, and I'm like, oh, fuck it, I'm fucking book to fuck get it. Get up and get this fucking house. <laughs> I like the way so that for the first one of the first stories anyway is about I think I think like it's interesting because a lot of people would make a lot more out of some of these ideas right and I like the I like the way you kind of have a really good idea and explore it very quickly and sort of throw it away so yeah. the the one about the guy who's writing his kid's name in the concrete oh it's a very, yeah, pavement. It's a, yeah it's a very it's a very quick story but it's a really good I that would make a film or something that idea so if, I, can, can I slightly give away what happens so he's writing his he wants. It's a lovely story about a father something trying to wanting to, to show your son that you loved him when he was little because you yeah. know he's going to forget that, that you had this moment. Yeah. Which, is, which I, you know, that's why I think all the time with my daughter is all this fucking time I'm putting in, and she's going to remember. Not going to remember. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> don't waste. Don't waste. <laughs> I have any, so that's why I write a blog every day, and I'm going to make her read that so that she yeah. knows, so she sees it's through. Sure. Mm -hmm. So this guy decides to write this son's name in the concrete and gets caught and gets. I can on the wet concrete yeah, guy. Yeah. And then the bloke doing the concrete kind of basically attacks him, and then he gets stuck in the concrete. Yeah. And then has to live in the concrete for the rest <laughs> of his life. Aye, and it's got this. Um, I was a wee bit worried when you started e explaining it. I thought, it's going to sound shite. Because <laughs> I, I don't even want to do it. You know, I would, like any sort of story, I was, I was saying to my girlfriend all day, oh, I wrote a, something happened on the tail. I said, I wrote a, a story about something like that. She, oh, aye, right. <laughs> I said, it's, uh, it's about. Um, she just wasn't fucking interested. <laughs> <laughs> it's good, it's good, you've got to read it. She's like that. <laughs> but this uh, one, like the idea of a, the idea of a man being stuck, it's just like you could, someone else would get like a, a film out of that or a novel out of that, you know what I mean? It's well, like, I don't, I don't think it's I've got sort of kafka or something. I don't think I've got an attention span. No. I, kinda, I, I tried, in, in the book, I tried writing like a 10,000 word story about, and that's at the end, right? But that took me fucking ages. It took me. It took me longer to write ten thousand words in one story than it did to write like ten one thousand word stories. Because yeah. you've got to kind of, uh, you know, the pace it and the plot <laughs> points and all this sort of shit. It gets it gets like a pain in the ass. I like just doing something and then it's finished I would, by I, the I, end of the day. I agree, but I, th I, know, I think it works really effective. It's, it's really. I, I said this about your first book, but I think your writing is just. It's so. It's such so much your voice, and it's so individual, and it's so unlike anything else. I think it's just really. <laughs> It's really brilliant, Thanks and I think most people would d would ru sort of ruin that story, but also it, it would bear with having more more done with it. But it's great to just do it that quickly. The twist happens, and then we've ruined it for everyone. Thank you very much. Uh, but uh, and I quite like you do this on Twitter. I mean, I love the way you use Twitter as well. It's it's kind of like there was a there was a I can't even remember what it was the other day. See, I sorry, I don't know if it, I, I'm I'm hearing things right. Yeah. But see, when you said um, it's probably just Sunday button or something. But see when you said, oh, and I love the way you did Twitter, I, I thought I heard something going like, <laughs> <laughs> did, did I imagine that? Or is it just something going like, oh, I'm bop, a lot, like a lot bopping? Of I thought somebody was going like that. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody will look, we go like that, every cunt's fucking left, man. Like, <laughs> thank you very much, cheers. No, but the, the <laughs> There's a couple of people who just like to come along because they hate the person. I just imagine that they're, I'm just... They're, 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 they're happy to pay out 15 quid just to come and go, ah, oh, ah. Oh. Yeah. They don't do I that. No, I just, I just imagine that, don't worry, there's not going to be a situation here. <laughs> <laughs> They've got Twitter now. They don't, the thing with those people don't ever have to cut, leave the house now. They can just do that from the... They can just tweet, go, oh. Aye. Aye. Get a room. <laughs> <laughs> There was a thing you did the other, there was one, I don't know if you can turn it into a short story, but there was one, and I can't quite remember the details of it, but it went on for quite a long time, a little tweets thing about you you working a way to kill people by dragging them out down the beach and tying them up under the sea. Do you remember this? Oh. And so they, they drowned. 
they drowned oh. under the sea and you could get everyone in a wedding party or something out one oh, by one aye, until, aye, aye. Until, <laughs> until, until every single and if you did it subtly you get every single guest aye. and then in the morning you'd wake up and there'd be the, the whole wedding party would be drowned under the sea tied yes, up I under can, the sea I, I can't that? remember why, why when was I, I, I remember was about a month or two ago but it was, was like it? again it was like a, I like, remember something today we uh, tying <laughs> like putting a bit of rope in the ground like a noose, an upside down noose. Yeah. So it's actually like no, you're not hanging for a neck for a tree, but it's actually under the under the water, just yeah. at the shore. And then getting somebody, pushing them under the water, and sticking their neck in it, and then um, so they're drowning there. And then, but I can't remember why. I, no, why I can't remember why. <laughs> because it went off. I used I used to tweet stuff like about Chris Brown all the time. I used to say I'd love to put him through a fucking mincer. I'd love to um, uh, crucify him, nail him to the bottom of a swimming pool, and things like that. Um, <laughs> um, but I can't remember that. That was just in general. It was yeah, just it was just a general murder general plan. It was just I a guess. plot to commit I mass murder. But it, it read like a kind of novel or a, a serial killer's diary. I'd love to write. I'd love to write something like that. I'd love yeah. to write. Uh, the, the killer doesn't get his comeuppance. It's not a study in uh, psychopathy or anything like that. It's just. It's, I, I'm actually enjoying it. I'm. I'm enjoying killing these people, and you're on the side of the fucking killer. There's no redeeming features, there's not, I know, the poor guy's went through a lot in his childhood, and that's why he's turned out like this. No, just like, no, let's go and fuck, like Grand Theft Auto, let's fucking go and kill some people, and, you know, kill a uh, horrible fucking thing, kill everybody, and yeah. um, I'd love to write something like that, really, you can get the sense that I'm fucking, you know, I'm really enjoying it, the writer is enjoying this. Yeah. That, he's not going, oh, what do you make of these people, you know, like, no, I'm that fucking person, I'm like, uh, it's either that or a fucking date for real. Take a pick. <laughs> but most people don't use Twitter in that way to write a kind of fantasy slow stroke fiction short story. It's really interesting. And and uh, Andy McH, my current my Twitter correspondent, uh, also uh, wanted to, uh, me to ask you about the fake WhatsApp tweets you've been doing, which is oh I, um, which are again quite full on, aren't they? I've seen some of I, these. Well, I did them. I think it was when I was starting the book tour and I was sitting yeah. on a train and an train and an train. I did it on the way down here, just kind of tweeting like fuck. And I just I just thought, right, I want to see if I can come up with a big fucking Twitter hit. And I noticed that a lot of uh, these 30,000 retweet, 40,000 retweet ones have got, I am dying. And then, you know, the kind of greeting laughing sort of, <laughs> crying laughing sort of face uh, emojis. And it's sometimes like WhatsApp stuff conversations. And I just noticed that the WhatsApp stuff between somebody and their granny or something like that, it's kind of funny, but it's them putting in this sort of canned laughter or, oh my God, can't breathe, that, that gives it that extra, like, mul multiplier, sort of like, times it by three funniness sort of boost. Yeah, yeah. So I thought, I want to do one of these WhatsApp things and then say at the beginning, oh my God, I'm dying, but I don't want to just do a normal conversation on WhatsApp. I want it being like, Mum, mum, like what's up? Dad, pick my dad. I've been stabbed. <laughs> I've been stabbed. Uh, I'm in the park right now. Please get uh, an ambulance. Where are you, son? Where are you? I, it does, it's too late, Dad. Just tell mum I love her and all that. I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding. Don't you ever do that. Shut the fuck up, bitch. <laughs> and lots of people, uh, that's like between a someday and a ma, someday and a dad, someday and a grand. I fucking hate you. Go and kill yourself. <laughs> I know, I hate you. Ha, ha, ha. Um, and people, what's getting retweeted like fuck, and people going like, this is a fucking disgrace, and... Uh, well, because anyone getting that as a retweet who doesn't know you, I think even people who do know you are not going to be clear whether it's oh, no, real, no, the, so the they're not going to think it's real. I was real. doing it kind of troll in a way, I was yeah, getting yeah. it to get attention for yeah, people yeah. who don't follow me, and I did one, that one about getting stabbed, I said, oh, uh, I've, been, I've been attacked in the park, right, where, where, are, where are you, baby? I was saying, you know, like the Muslim, like, where are you, where are you, baby, are you okay, hunt? just stay awake, don't fall asleep, <laughs> I, I, I'm getting dizzy, mum, just, I can't phone uh, the ambulance, phone 999, you have to, I can't, just tell dad I love him, I'm only joking, I'm only, don't you ever do that again, and then somebody tweeted me saying, I hope you do get stabbed, <laughs> and I replied, uh, like kind of quote retweet to everybody saying, I hope you get stabbed this, this, this weekend. And then, I was, I was in the, I can't remember what, where I was at the time, but it was on a book tour, right? And um, I'd finished one of the shows and when I got to the hotel, I noticed my account had been suspended. <laughs> It said, your account has been suspended for this tweet. <laughs> You've been reported. Uh, I hope you get stabbed this weekend. <laughs> I thought, wait a fucking minute. No, no. 
They, they said, I hope you get stamped first. And it says, well, if you want to appeal it, you have to enter your password again. I didn't have my password because it's in one of these password, password managers and I didn't have the app in my phone. And I, I just thought, oh, fuck it, all right. And it said, you are locked out for 12 hours. I said, like, for fuck's sake. So I had to wait till like midday the next day. Then I reported them back. <laughs> and, and they got suspended. <laughs> so it's like a nuclear fucking tag is, is brilliant. And, and since noticing that they can do that to me and I can do that to them, I've been doing it to a lot of people. <laughs> You know, some other people go like, you're a prick for saying that. Get them fucking suspended. <laughs> you just honestly go to report and, and you, you don't say that they've said something offensive. You say that because there's options. Don't say just offensive. Say it's a targeted attack. <laughs> <laughs> and they get locked out for And, and I've, I've seen somebody like kind of right wing person go like that, saying something to us. And I reported them and they got locked out and I checked up their account like about a day later. Oh my God, and they were just tweeting to everybody. Oh my God, so much for free speech and all that. You're going to drive everybody off a of, uh, Twitter. Twitter, this is not on. And like, fucking yes, man. <laughs> <laughs> they, had, they had the wee Pepe fucking frog avatar, that shit. Yes, man. Grass, be a grass and bastard. <laughs> I, used to do, I used to do that all the time with uh, students across the road, like, having parties and all that. And, I just, every time I'm just phoning fucking police every time. <laughs> no 999, but the other number, like 101 or whatever it is, it gets uh, just the normal, you know, if they've got time, they'll come out. And I would just keep getting this fucking party shut down <laughs> week after week until they didn't date anymore. And I just, I was saying to people on Twitter, you know, I, I can hear, you know, I can make out what the fucking song is that they're playing. And somebody tweeted me saying, if you can make out the tune, shut it down. <laughs> I was like, you're fucking right, mate. You know, was it just kind of... You kind of make it, you make it every... I know that song, I know that song. Uh, so, uh, I used to... Uh, I love grass and fucking... Yeah. But I went... I would I mean, get grass up when I was wee, now it's my fucking I mean, tongue. it's what Twitter's probably made. It's sort of fun to be that guy. It's just mischievous and it's wind... It's just all wind-ups, really. Isn't Aye. It? It's, um... It's just a, it's just a laugh. Yeah. It's just, there's not, I'm, I'm, I'm teetotal, right, and I don't take it anymore. I'm bored at my fucking mind. This is the only sort of buzz I fucking get. Grassing them in, and aye, there's wee guys in the, the, back, the back of my house, they're, they're, they're drinking, aye, could they do something about it, aye. You see the police come, you're like, fucking yes, man. <laughs> you just go, I, I can just phone a number, and these fucking guys in uniforms fucking turn up about 10 minutes later, and just see all these wee guys running away, and, or you just phone a number, and you wait, and there's this party, and then you see this fucking motor turn up, and you go, and there's a the music going off. I did that, man. <laughs> and you've paid for it, you've paid for it, phone the fucking number. It's a, it's a laugh, it's there for you. It's there for you. <laughs> Grassin's brilliant. Grassin's gonna be big next year. <laughs> I can never work half your the, the, the things you come up with are quite believable. Like today you were um, tweeting about <laughs> and like I still, even though I know you're joking on everything you put, uh, some of it I believe. So today you were, you were tweeting about how you used to work in an art gallery in New York. Oh, and, aye. And, <laughs> aye, aye. and you were also a painter. And yep. then <laughs> I I just say was, I just say things like um I said this has gone few years back and this is like 1988 and I worked in a gallery and uh, I, you know, put, I, put, I wanted to repeat all the fucking tweets but I just, and you know who that was, that was uh, uh, Lois Lane for original uh, Superman, Lo uh, Margot Kiddle, that was, that was her. And I'm obviously knowing fucking New York in the mid 80s because I would have been about fucking 12. But it's good that you're making up this story about this celeb that you sort of met, you believe it as you're typing it. It's, yeah. It's fucking well, good. Margot Kidd is a very good choice of someone. She, so she wants to buy your painting, or she likes your painting, or she knows you've done it in this way. Yeah. To come up with, go, who's that woman who was in? And uh, I, some people said, did you ever meet? There was a cancelled Green Day gig in Glasgow. Some people were saying, did you ever meet uh, Billy Joe? What's her name? Uh, what's his name? And I went, aye, aye, aye. And and I just made up fucking some story about <laughs> sort of seeing him in a, a lift in a hotel. Uh, you going? I'm going up. All oh, right, okay. And. <laughs> It's good as you're making it up, you're like, this is, this feels fucking real. Yeah. You feel yourself going mental. <laughs> feel yourself going kind of psychotic and going, in a way, this is happening. <laughs> because if that did happen, it's got the same feelings as how it is if you make it up. So in a way, this is fucking real. You're not, never 100% real because yeah. it didn't happen. 
But all the other stuff, like how you would feel inside if it happened, which is part of the reality, you're 80% there. So it, it's mostly fucking real. Mostly happened. If you think about it. It's, well, I am thinking about it. Yeah, I'd say maybe 70% really. 70%. 70% max. Um, and I also enjoy your, obi your obituaries that you do on Twitter every time anyone dies. Oh, I, yeah. Which and I, what I really enjoy is that quite often they get picked up and put in the papers as genuine, oh, I love as that, genuine obituaries. I love that. There's odd one a day and I think, I ah, shouldn't have, maybe shouldn't have done that. I mean, <laughs> they're under 30 when they died or, you know, like, I, I don't know if I did it with Amy Winehouse. I think I, I, think I did Amy Winehouse. I think I did it with her. Every now and again there's somebody that people go, I nah, nah, you shouldn't have. You should, I don't know if you know what I'm talking about. I would tweet, um, oh, I met such and such at a charity do. She was surprisingly doing it and very funny. Uh, <laughs> no matter who's died, and people be tweeting me saying, this is how I find out people have fucking died. People tell me, I've got a kind of like, a wee kind of hot, like wee hotline there, you know, a kind of red phone type of thing on Twitter. Yeah. If somebody dies, people tweet me, oh, don't, did you ever meet, uh, <laughs> Here's the most recent one. Uh, maybe somebody in Doctor Who, was it? No, no, Brian Cant for Playaway, yeah. Play School. Did you ever meet Brian Cant at a charity? <laughs> oh, what, Brian Cant fucking did. Uh, Brian Cant at a charity. <laughs> Hold on, Lynn, I just need to, just uh, <laughs> go need to, I think Daniel needs to go to the toilet. Just a minute. I need to, they're, they were waiting for me, this is how they find out. My uh, charity, they're surprisingly doing it. I'm fucking spell mistake, uh, delete, delete. <laughs> Like, I'm pure, like Daniel had yeah. the fucking phone. But it's also a very good parody of all the people who basically, you know, that, that, that someone dies and then Twitter's full of people making it about themselves, aren't they? I mean, Aye. that's sort of what it's... I'm looking forward to when I die, and hopefully <laughs> people do make a, you know, the fans make a, a, a tribute to me yeah. by tweeting that. I think it would be really funny if I die in a kind of, in a violent way, <laughs> that, that people tweet my girlfriend and thinking, yeah. he'd like this, wouldn't he? <laughs> He liked this, wasn't he? Like, she's like, he got fuck. He's he'd fucking stamped in the fucking group of wee fucking guys. You might know. Oh, come on, it's just a laugh, man. He did. My son, pure fucking devastated. Where's daddy? Where's my charity do? Hey, I met your dad at a charity do, and you know what I mean? The, the tweet that he did. did. I'm, not, I'm not kidding. It's not about your dad, wee man. You need to do that. I said, no, no, Paul's are in here. All right, well, leave Twitter behind. I'll ask you in a minute. Everybody fucking sorting out people fucking grass, not fucking farting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to ask you an emergency question. This is my new favourite emergency question. What is the strangest thing you have found in the embers of a bonfire? Um, That's a good question. Wait, wait and see. Wait and see what happens. Uh, it takes a little well, while, but we're going to get some fuck magic. All. Fuck all. We're going to get some magic in a second, don't worry. I can make something up. Yeah, I do. All right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> A deep hedgehog. No, that's not funny. <laughs> that's not fucking I funny. I bet there is that. something. Come on, that's an animal. Um, uh, my cat. I found my first cat when I was a kid. We found it in the embers of a bonfire. This really? Quite, yeah. It was. It was still alive, but it had been quite badly burnt in this bonfire. <laughs> <laughs> Some people hate cats. Didn't they, they do. They just had, they, it had all its side burnt. Like there was only a kitten. And, and then it's all it right. A, well, it was a wild. It was a wild cat that lived in the farm behind us, and we the, the farm. The farmer said he didn't want it, so we, we paid for the vet to come and stitch her up. It's slow cooking. Slow, that's, 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 that's one of the people who hate cats. Do you hate yeah. cats? He yeah, hates cats, that guy. You've got to watch, got to watch people who hate cats. Because yeah. it's like, like you're, you're hating cats, bedwetting and arson. <laughs> uh, triangle and <laughs> psychopath. <laughs> My girlfriend's ma, she fucking hates cats. <laughs> she hates cats and... I, what, what, what is it you hate about cats? They're they don't selfish. get your love back. Says the man who hates cats. Kind of and is glad, <laughs> is glad when they get badly burnt. Those cats are so selfish. Love cats. Yeah. Love cats. Yeah. What's that? Cats are slappers. Oh. What the hell? The master from Doctor Who has spoken, ladies and gentlemen. He came in late. Cats are slappers. Right. They're really not. I don't. You're saying you have sex with cats instead of. <laughs> you're saying instead of prostitutes. If I can't get a prostitute, just pop down the Batsy dog and cats home. Pretend you're a concerned. You can just take the cat home and fuck it for free, and no one. It's got a little tight little cat anus. I'm, I've kind of moved on. I'm thinking about what I can. What's in the embers of the yeah, fire? Let me think. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> let's see. Uh, a let a what? A what? A fascist. A fascist. A fascist. Is that what you said? A cat hating fascist. A cat hating fascist. That's the the weirdest thing I've found in a bonfire. Yeah, that is strange. <laughs> strange that he knew. That guy knew. He must have been with you. Yeah. Uh, he must have came when I talked about it in one of my previous shows. Okay, fine. <laughs> Let's not talk to the audience again. They're strange. <laughs> You know, I thought you were quite strange with the whole time people up under the sea until they drown. I don't know if he can hear us right, but did he say cats are slappers? <laughs> <laughs> it's not the first yes, thing I would think about. Lead you on, they fucking lead you on. <laughs> don't want anything to do with you. All right, I've got, I've got, I've got another one for you. If your, genitals, if your genitals had to turn into a sea creature for one day every month, <laughs> but you could choose the sea creature they turned into, what sea creature would you like that to be? Um, something wee, so that people don't notice a uh, sea lion. <laughs> Is that sea lion? <laughs> no, no, it's not sea lion, sea horse. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking sea lion. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking sea lion. Something they never been noticed. Like a sea lion. A fucking walrus. Um, they might just think you were standing behind a sea lion if it ah, was a yeah, sea lion. Yeah. Just, uh, <laughs> just this. That'd actually be best. Yeah, well, that's be. best. I, and people just go there. Do you like you to stroke my sea lion? Do you think we need to take it away? No, no, no. I'll have to, I'll have to come with it. I'll have to make sure it's safe. Make sure it's safe. Seahorses aren't that don't, small. Don't, 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 don't play with it too much. <laughs> oh, fucking coming at the mouth like that. <laughs> fucking warm, dude. Um, uh, seahorse. Seahorse. But a seahorse is quite big as well. A is it? No, you oh. get, well, you get these ones that are like that. What? Well, not ah, compared to, like, um, plankton. <laughs> you get ones that are about me, cock no. size. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, average cock size. <laughs> you can pick what age anyway. I take it to start off with and you go, right, a one-year-old So you want a, you want a one-year-old seahorse? That is... A seahorse. sick. If it was a middle-aged seahorse, that's all right. Right. Um, <laughs> um, you've been on tour. Well, since I last saw you, so it's quite interesting. So you were, as you said, when you came here last time, you read a bit from your book, and then you went off and did a book tour, and you're back yeah. on stage. You've done a Limmy live show, and you've done mm -hmm. um, you've done another two book tours, have you? So you've been doing, I, quite, I, you're doing quite a lot of touring. How are you finding the touring experience, aside from the hotels? I, uh, it's brilliant. I really like it, and just I love the like the Q and A bit, just fucking rabbiting away, like no, just talking a lot of fucking shit. And uh, um, it's been brilliant. Just going to all these places. I went to like um, Ireland, never been before, but I never fucking. I, I went to Sheffield, right? Never been to Sheffield, and I thought I kind of like Def Leppard, and I kind of like the Human League, and I thought, well, that's where um, there's for Sheffield, and I'm there for two nights. I wonder if you can go on a wee thing or go to a place that says. Def Leppard were here once. <laughs> and and what I did for the first night was I got to Sheffield and I just went to the hotel and I, and my show wasn't on that night. It was the next night. I just spent the whole fucking night in this uh, travel lodge room and the whole in the next day, right, I was I spent almost 24 hours in this wee room and it was fucking brilliant. <laughs> I just, it was like being in jail. It was magic. <laughs> And I loved going to all these places and no doing anything. Yeah. I, got, I got to Dublin. One of the first things I did was just went to the pictures to watch um, uh, Alien Covenant. Oh, yeah. Just wasting all these fucking opportunities <laughs> to check places out and get to know people. <laughs> Felt fucking brilliant. It felt like, like going all the way around the world to some amazing place and going, I'm not even going to open my fucking eyes. <laughs> I'm going to open my eyes. And getting on the plane and coming all the way back. Just kind of waste. Yeah. Waste. I'm like that though as well. When I toured with Stuart, he would always wanted to go and see the. He wanted to go walking up mountains. He wanted to go to all the tourist attractions. We yeah. went to loads of tourist attractions. Mm -hmm. When I tour on my own, I literally just go to the hotel and then to the theatre and then go home if I can. It's probably because if you've got a Wayne, if you've got a boy or a lass or whatever, then it's good getting a like if, if they're wee. It's yeah. good getting a, some. If you're not doing a tour, your the other option is to just lock yourself in the toilet, <laughs> just pretend you're doing a shite. Ten times a day, when you're acting just like that, just sitting on your fucking phone, or just just going like that. <laughs> in a minute, in a minute, I've got something, something's not right with me. I need to. So again, going on a tour is just a good fucking yeah. getting back to before you have a way and back to the old 
watching Columbo while you're lying on the couch sort of days. So just be uh, lying in the fucking bedroom watching something on film four, some old fucking Kirk Douglas film. Like, yeah. This is a fucking life. This, this is shite, man. This is shite. I fucking love this. It's, 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 it's really true, that. that I think the things you... Once you've got a family and you've got all the time, all your time is taken up, the things you miss is all the stuff, you know... I, I did nothing. Some, well, like, I, the thing I like best is getting back from a tour when everyone's asleep, I've come back late and it's midnight and everyone in the house is asleep and I'll sit downstairs drinking whiskey and watch telly on my own. And it's the best that, fucking, that it's good. the best thing I in the world. I used to do that with wine. Uh, before I was doing stand-up and all that, I used to love just drinking a bottle of wine, kind of every night or a half bottle of wine and just playing Grand Theft Auto 3 back then. Yeah. And, and just watching Rope, Alfred Hitchcock, about every fucking night and then playing GTA and just sitting there with a big fucking glass of wine. Like, fucking magic, man. I love <laughs> Drinking on I'd your own is the best. But you do, you miss the, the, it's all that time you wasted before you had a, you know, it's like, but it's sort of um, terrible and amazing. So it's nice. It's to probably get it's the best use of fucking time. It's like, yeah. I'm going on holiday next week. Oh, you must be looking forward to getting away. Well, you, you don't get to relax when you got away and you're spending all your time making sure a fucking Wayne Disney drown. That's it. <laughs> you don't get to relax. Just, where is he? 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 It's, uh, it's fucking it's hard. It's hard as fuck. The holiday is actually sitting in the house while he's on Minecraft. Yeah. That's the holiday. And then the work starts when you, when you arrive at fucking Mallorca or whatever. <laughs> Good Sorry, I'm in a right, a right money. Yeah. Way the night, sorry. No, it's good. It's, it's, it's good to be honest about it as well. It's, uh, <laughs> uh, today you were tweeting about manspreading and saying yeah. that it was all right for men to manspread. Well, I don't. I mean, look at me right yeah. now. Right? That's because I've got kind of wee, sort of wee uh, genitals in a way. Yeah. I, I, say, I say that. I don't know. I'm fucking para, yeah. but um, I but it was a guy right next to me and yeah. he uh, on the train and he, he was like he was like that. Yeah. And I was like right there's. That, there's like two seats next yeah. to each other. That's the middle. Yeah. This is my bit. Everything here to there, that's my bit. His leg was just there at the, the border. Yeah. So he was at like effectively on my side. I don't like that. No, I don't like that. I wasn't even serious anyway. I was just saying, oh, man, spread. And that's because men have got uh, balls yeah. and cocks and, and some of them need to do that because they've got big balls yeah, and they do, do that. You can do that, but you don't need to do that. I, I've been on a train once with a guy... And he was like uh, half onto the seat. Aye. There was only one seat, and I sat on it. And he didn't move his, you know. So our, the leg Aye. bones were like touch. I could feel his leg bone Aye. with my leg bone. They were so brushed together, and he still wouldn't move. It's like he was just like. Right I was thinking about it on the train. I was thinking, I wonder if you can get spikes like we kind of. <laughs> <laughs> they go under the trousers, yeah. and I kind of like spikes you get on runner, you know, runner, you know, athletes kind of yeah. shoes, and you just put them there. So and, and it's not like obviously sticking out. <laughs> But it's just enough for them to go, wait a minute, what was that? They might, they might think it's just a wee, like a zip or something, or they don't know. But it's just enough to move them yeah, away, well, maybe yeah. stick a wee bit of fucking wee disease at the end of the fucking needle. <laughs> something like that. So you get that, and then if, if, you're, if it's somebody you're seeing all the time, then like maybe like a month down the line, you start to see them getting a wee bit ill and losing a bit of weight. <laughs> losing a wee bit of weight and all that. And, you all right? Are you all right, pal? <laughs> <laughs> that would be good. Yeah. <laughs> and I went to your website to, uh, to to look up, you know, if there's anything on a website <laughs> worth looking at. And, oh, uh, yeah. 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 The, there's only one. Uh, well, I, uh, there's only... You go to your website and there's just five coloured <laughs> bars. Swearing xylophone. Yeah, it's like a xylophone, yeah. Aye, and it says, you are a fucking cunt. <laughs> yeah. Depending on what you press, you get that said again and again in different different notes yeah. and all that. Uh, I made it first years ago in, in Flash. <laughs> um, but then I redid it for uh, HTML5. <laughs> um, and it's other wee things like forward slash gouge, forward slash DD speaking clock, forward slash speaking clock for Yoda. Okay. Yoda speaking clock. Yeah. Um, I had a good old days of flash. Don't don't get don't get me started on that. We talked a little about it last on the last podcast you came, and I didn't really understand it then either. So um, let's. I'll ask you another. I'll ask you a proper emergency question from the proper book. Oh, actually, I wanted the, is it like because again, everything I read, every interview I read with you, I think this is all bullshit. 
They, right. I wonder. I wonder if this. You, you did an interview with like a local newspaper, right. and the guy said, "Tell me something that nobody knows about you," and then you. <laughs> <laughs> and if it's true, then it's not at all funny. And then you, <laughs> you said that you had undescended testicles when you were a child. I, I tweeted that the, the, the day. Yeah. I tweeted that the day as well. Yeah. I don't know why that's fucking gone on all the time. I undes- I thought undescended. Yeah. I, I remember when I was wee. Like primary school, even I remember showing people my scars. I remember going like that, look, and there was all this bruising, and there was these scars down there. So I don't know when it happened. I thought undescended meant your balls are in your your ball bag, your scrotum, or whatever. <laughs> but one feels kind of attached to your body, and the other one sort of loose and moves about. That's what it means. But it actually, means that the balls are all the way fucking inside yeah. your body, right. and it's sort of it's not dead common, but it's not like. Some kind of like, oh, it's a fucking viral video. Wait till you see what happened to this wee boy. <laughs> it's like, I, they just cut you open and they push it fucking down. And um, one of them feels sort of attached to my body, the other one feels a bit loose. Yeah. And um, I had to get, aye, aye, that's true, aye. Yeah. The thing is, though, because of the Margot Kidd Yourself? The thing of the, <laughs> mine, are, mine are okay. Because the Margot Kidd thing, I just don't believe anything you say. No, then. that's not true. But I, I tweeted just a, like, uh, an hour ago, uh, I saw Princess, Princess Di's brother. Yeah, I saw And that I really well. did see him. Yeah. Um, I don't know, don't hear you. That's nothing Spencer. to use, man. I, um, Lord Spencer, it? yeah, Lord Spencer. I, uh, that's nothing to use, don't hear you. We see him all the time, right? yeah. I, but I saw him, I was like, that's fucking. I was ready to say something, I don't fucking say anything. I was ready to take a picture, but no. Yeah. Um, I, there he was. <laughs> there he was. <laughs> He's quite old now, are you sure it was him? Cause he's, he's, he's no, it's definitely him, because he's all... It's him, but, like, his, fl- his face sort of... It looks like he's been punched fuck it. Yeah. He's like, well, he started like his dad. Do you remember his dad? And Princess Diana's dad as well, ironically. So, coincidentally, uh, he was kind of a... You know, his face was kind of quite bloated, and now the young Spencer is sort of turning into... Aye. That kind of bloated. He's it's a, like a aye. Doctor Who monster kind of like, like bloated. Cloud, like, like he's cloud bits sort of coming out here and there, and... Um, I thought, you know, is it the eyebrow thing, like, uh, is it him? No, I thought it was Elton John. That's right. <laughs> Remember, he did the, the talk. But I know it was him. It was him. It was him. Right, I'll ask you the question before we li- start libeling the royal family, which we would never do on this show. Um, if you had to have sex with either Zippy, Bungle, George, Jeffrey, or Rod, whilst. Did you, did you watch Rainbow when yep. you were a kid? Mm-hmm. Do you have that in Scotland? Aye, aye. Yeah, okay. Whilst Jane and Freddie had sex with each other next to you, but they couldn't join in with the sex, if you had to do that, which of the Rainbow team would you have sex with? Uh, uh, Zippy, right. Bungle, George, Jeffrey, or Rod from just Rod Taylor, to, Just so I know, exactly, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. Uh, are we talking about actually shagging the puppets, yes. or are we imagining that they're real, or are we talking about shagging the puppeteers? <laughs> <laughs> how, re- how much in reality are we? Well, just like you... What, because cause you know that below Zippy <laughs> yeah. and George. Yeah. No, Bungle. No, George, there's a man inside Who's Bungle. Who's the bear? Bungle's the bear. Bungle's there's the there's bear, someone right? inside You know there. that if you, uh, there was a hole in the back, you put a cock in, you'll be shagging a guy's ass. <laughs> but <laughs> below, there's nothing below Zippy. So let's well, say Zippy. Yeah. Fuck it. <laughs> let's speak things up and just say Zippy. I, um, uh, Zippy. <laughs> I'm just going to uh, cut uh, the rest out so it's just you immediately saying Zippy. Say Zippy. <laughs> I'm going to edit it so you go, which of the way? Zippy! Zippy. <laughs> Definitely Zippy. Before you've even finished the question. Zippy! I know this question, Zippy. <laughs> uh, try this one. I li- uh, this is uh, one I'm trying to popularise that isn't popular yet. If you could have all your teeth replaced by psychic orbs that could tell you all future events by telepathy, but would scream at a high-pitched volume every time you opened your mouth... <laughs> Would you go ahead with the teeth replacement operation? Some people need that one a second time. Uh, no. No, you got it. No, I wouldn't do it. No, I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it. Even though you could see the future. No, because all the, the rest of it, it would the do you nothing. It would. Um, you wouldn't like it. It would. It would fuck your head. And maybe would want to be around you because of the screaming sound. Yeah. No. You just keep your mouth closed and write. I'm everything. taking these questions very seriously. <laughs> that's the, that's very, the way very they seriously. must be told. We were, t- we were tweeting about uh, Monopoly tactics. I'd quite like to talk to you about the tactics for playing Monopoly. Oh, why? Because we were tweeting about it a, a few months ago. I don't know if I remember. Because there was a programme, I think the, um, the Infinite Monkey Cage talked about it, but I think their tactics were incorrect. They said 
that um, you should get the red set Trafalgar no. Square. No, no, no. Because that's the Trafalgar Square is the the one you land on. Most land, that's right. But I so I used to play online. I used to play, online. Used to play online, and it was like an American yeah. one, and it's got all these different names, it's like Madison. So I don't know. But I played it um, a few months ago. Went down to this uh, person's house, and we're playing it there. We're drunk, mind you. But I'm like, I'm going to just think to myself, I'm going to fucking win this. It was me and these two other guys that were drunk, and I thought, get orange, get orange. Orange is what you you want to get. It's a bit the highest return on investment. Uh, don't forget about green. Forget about green. But I thought get that any way you can. Orange is good because because a lot of people will go to land and land on the jail square probably more than any other square. So that means coming out of jail, you'll hit. You're likely to hit anything on orange. I like orange, and that's how I used to play. But get, I think I think the best one to go for is the light blue set. Well, because let me tell you why. <laughs> Because it's quite likely on the first turn they'll all be taken, right? If you can manage to get them, and we would talk about this, and I think this is the way to do it. Get someone... Wait, you get round, get the get one light blue, the other two get taken as well quite quickly. If you go around, you get a green, you go, oh, I'll swap you a green for one of the light blues, and the people are going, <laughs> green's much better than a light blue, and so they'll do it. And then you go, oh, have I done something stupid? You know you haven't done stu- something stupid. Well, I and just then, go... And I then you get those, and you can build hotels straight away, and then bang, you're in. I what? just go by the stats. I just well, go by the data. Stats is not enough. <laughs> um, because, A, people land on go a lot, so that's still, it's got, the, it's got the orange thing, still going for it. But you can get it quickly, get it quickly, and you can pay for hotels straight get, away. Get these things so you can then trade them, maybe, right? But get the orange ones, but the big, it's the most important it's tip hard to of get all. the orange ones. The most important tip of all yeah. is to be humble. <laughs> It is, because that's what I was doing with them. You don't go, ah, I'm going to fucking win this. I'm going to fucking, yes, let's get it started. I'm going to win this. Because they'll all go, ah, no, I'm going to get him and they want to trade with you and they'll fuck you. And they want to, you just go, ah, um, c- could I maybe swap that? Or could I maybe have the oranges and, and maybe for that? <laughs> and like when you're taking money off them, go, this is how I was playing. Ah, fuck, sorry. Yeah, all right. sorry you'll, get, you'll get back in here. Once you know the fuck though, then, and I was saying this on Twitter, then you can really bring out the fucking Emperor Palpatine sort of fucking thing. <laughs> you can just, I was at the Emperor Palpatine the last time I was fucking here, I think. Because you, you've, you've got the Chancellor Palpatine thing to begin with, where you're just sort of like being all nice and th- that. Then once you know the fucked, and they fucking, you know, they're, they're just like, they're dying. Yeah, then you can just go out, fucking pay me right now. <laughs> pay me right now. Right now, that kid, you can swear at them, call them names. There's nothing they can do. <laughs> nothing, nothing you can do. And I fucking won. I won. Yeah. I, won. I think orange is good, but. They I, were steaming, I, mind you, but that's their fault. <laughs> <laughs> I think orange is good, but I, I would like you to consider light blue in the future, just for a, to win the game very quickly. You've got, well, to get them, you've got to get them quickly. The problem with orange, I find, is that sometimes the one that's six from the, from the jail, the first orange one, you don't get that one quite, quite as quickly as the other. So sometimes you go around the about board quite a long time and no one's, no one's landed. I play the game... No, no, no. I play the, Monopoly the, all the time against my phone. The jail... Wait a minute. It's go to jail. The go first to jail. Go to jail's on the first corner. Go, the go to jail, the jail, and free parking. Isn't it? Yeah. Free, it's, is it? it's jail, free parking, go to jail, go... Right. And then the first orange one, Marlborough Road, is the sixth. Well, I, I, see all these things? This kind of reminds me of Street Fighter 4 yeah. that I used to play, right? Um, see when you're trying to do all the combos, you're learning all the combos, that goes into that. That gets too complicated for me. You end up fucking it up. See if you just sort of like, kind of like, here's an Star Wars sort of thing. You kind of use the force and you don't think about all the fucking combos. You just go, I'm just going to play in fucking gut instinct. Yeah, I'm I just going to, I case the day the odd fucking uh, firebox I used to go yeah. cigar. And... <laughs> You did the odd thing like that, but generally just your fucking quick reflexes and stuff like that. Remembering all the combos, it's too fucking hard, right? Especially when you get older. So you need to keep it simple. So two simple things. Get orange, get all oranges. Only day three hussies. Don't bother going for the hotels. Three hussies, just there. That's your highest, uh, that's, that's the best thing. And, uh, and uh, orange and be humble. <laughs> that's it. Be humble, don't act like you care about winning and be nice and all that until you can really reveal yourself. I played a game of Monopoly, admittedly against computer opponents on my phone, where I went round the board seven times and I hadn't landed on a single property I could buy. Because I either landed on, like, 
go to jail or right. I landed on stuff that someone else had already landed on and I went round seven times. I, I thought I'm going to do the whole game without being able to buy a single property and then it's quite difficult to play I that can game. I play it a computer with because you're not getting people. the joy of beating the real person. No, I do get the joy of beating... There's a penguin on it and I just imagine it's... <laughs> oh, right, right, There's right, a penguin. Right, right. I play the penguin and the, um, the taxi car... And right. uh, the, there's an Easter Island statue on it. But you need to. And uh, I believe, and I hate the penguin. Right. As long I, as I beat the penguin, I, I don't mind. I can imagine mind. if you play that enough, you do start to hate that. Yeah. Thing, even though you know it's not real, you do start to fucking yeah. hate it. But um, it's good beating real people. Nothing beats real. That's why I play Overwatch all the time. Fuck it. Anybody play Overwatch? Fucking love that game, man. It's just good beating other fucking people, knowing that they're raging. There's a real person out there <laughs> like that. Fuck off. Especially when you get them to rage quit. Yeah. Especially when you see them to leave early and you're like, yes, man. They're like, oh, fuck this, fuck this. No better, no better feeling. Used to get out of a street fighter as well. People rage quitting. Fucking magic. I feel, the, I feel the penguin is more upset than a real person would be. Really? Think, does yeah, it, what's I, the penguin there, does it? Well, it, um, it looks a bit stroppy when it loses. The ball deflates. That's good. Which I don't like that, it's too far. <laughs> If you had to do a human centipede with two other people, yeah. y if you had to, you're in the middle, uh -huh. which, who would you have in front of you and behind you? Do you know, I was asked, I actually asked this in my, uh, my Q&A. Were you? I Someone saw... nicked it off me then. Because um... that's my question. No I... one else could have thought of that. Am I in the middle? Yeah, you're in the middle. So you've got to eat the shit I have to someone. be in the middle. I would, uh, my girlfriend would be in front, oh, so nice. I'm eating her shite. That's the person who's <laughs> shite. I've never eaten, eaten her shite, in case you're wondering. Um, <laughs> But that's the person whose shit I could put up in the most, probably. Yeah. Um, and behind me, just, just a general Tory. Um, <laughs> I'd say Theresa May, but I'd be kind of sexist. Um, say David Cameron, but he's not doing it anymore. Uh, let's say the fucking Queen. <laughs> <laughs> Who came down to London? Like William Wallace. Who came down to London and... You know, Get him! I'm drawing quarter. All right, and uh, on, a, on a similar theme, if you had to be anally violated by a popular chocolate bar, if you had to be, yeah. which chocolate bar would you like to be inserted into your anus? Uh, the thinnest one, so that would be maybe Bitsy or Curly Wurly. <laughs> then you can break the chocolate bar up. You've got to have the whole thing up there. Well, a star bar would be all right. Star bar? A star bar. It's quite, um, it's that. It's quite a thick one, isn't it, a star but bar? But you do shites that are bigger. <laughs> <laughs> if I actually saw a shite in the pan that was as thin as a, a star bar, I'd be kind of like This. Um, no, that'd be all right. That'd be fine. Yeah. That'd be fine. And anyway, it'd start to melt anyway up with the warmth of your arse and <laughs> start to waste the weight of nothing. No, but then you got the peanuts. One start melts away, then you got the fucking peanuts screaming yeah. against. Um, I mean, if you had a peanut allergy, that would be a bad way to die as well, wouldn't it? If that's, that's how they fight. I'd say um, just uh, a normal kind of uh, uh, Yorkie. Yorkie? Because that's so very chunky. It's chunky. Well, uh, and hard. Dairy milk, because they've changed, they used to be. I can't remember, they're kind of round now. Yeah, there's a little bit. Ah, nice. wait a minute. Um, a single kind of strip. Um, Twix. Arrow. Tw Twix has got the, bit of the biscuit in it, remember? Yeah. What? Finger of fudge. 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 Yep. Yeah. Finger of fudge. Yeah. Can't take answers from the, the public. And I just want, we're going to have to stop soon. It's been very nice talking to you again. Thank you for coming down to. Especially to talk to me, I'm very... A lot, uh, of, a lot of Monopoly fans in the audience will be yeah, happy tonight. <laughs> <laughs> happy tonight. We had some good chat there. I didn't think you're getting it us tonight. It was better than the fucking infinite monkey cage. You didn't know anything about the, the strategy of playing Monopoly. Out. I'll check that out. What they knew, they knew all about the maths, but they don't know about the passion and the Ah, uh, you intrigue. need the psychology as... The, the male... That, no, sorry, I won't get any again. Fuck okay. it. <laughs> I'm, I'll happily talk to you about it for a long time. Um... Your vines were all screened together at a film festival all in one go. Yep. How the, the hell did that go down? It, it's kind of, it's sort of, um, it's kind of fucking annoying in a way. <laughs> like, all the vines, it's all, it was a London short film festival and it was like the first 600, so that's like six, it's an hour long, right? And <laughs> solid, so it starts off with the, 
I it's just like I've done ones like these characters that just sort of popped up like the plasterer and the the laugher and all that. But it, when <laughs> <laughs> but it would um, you would get when I actually did them. I didn't do them in a, in a row. I have one there and I'd go and do some other shit and then one there and one there. So you don't see them all in a, all grouped together. So it's just all this fucking one after another, one after yeah. another stuff, and it's just like kind of getting bombarded. Just with anything. It doesn't matter what it is, six seconds, six yeah. seconds to the next one. What did Iannucci reckon, though? He, what, what well, he you said he liked it, but you, you would, wouldn't you? Uh, you wouldn't, so you would. Armando Iannucci was hosting this uh, one. He was, he was, he was, he was there, he was hosting it, he was saying that was good, but how many people, if they don't like it, are going to go, ah, I, d I didn't like that, Brian, <laughs> I didn't <laughs> I didn't like that at all. There was too many vines was it there. Too there much too for you. No, it's just a bit boring, just a bit <laughs> kind of shite. Remember, I'm, you know, I've seen it all, Brian. Uh, you know, I've seen it all. Um, uh, I think he liked it, but the whole thing was just like, even if there's something funny that pops up, you don't have time to fucking laugh because then all things just came but up. It's a bit like the Clockwork Orange thing or something when just things are flashing in your Aye. face. It's all like that kind of But I'd like to do it again. Some people said, Aye, why are you doing it in London? Why are you not doing it up the road? Why, why, why are you taking all that down to London? You're yeah. too fucking good for us now and all that. Yeah. Um, so so I'll, I'll do it up there, I think. Yeah. But it's no. I'd, I'd probably say to people, oh, come along and uh, oh, take acid and all that. Right. Oh, that'd be a crack <laughs> night. No, no, don't do that. <laughs> I want, to, I want to do it again, but it's no, it's no that fucking enjoy. It's not a funny thing. It's kind of mere. It's funny. I think that the other things are kind of funny if you're into that sort of thing. I like them, otherwise I wouldn't fucking do them. But when you're seeing it like that, it's just you don't have a. Yeah, but that's what's that's what you know that that. It's merely an arty. Is kind of it's merely an arty experience. Yeah. Rather than actual like fucking comedy. But yeah, it is. But then it's sort of it is sort of artistic. It, you know, like a lot of things that are in art galleries are kind of similar to that sort of stuff really you know they're, they're, they're just like a load of stupid shit all put I together <laughs> and that's what is that is, that is by a normal looking but man. it's no but I'm not going to tell everybody like if I date up the road I'm not going to say by the way just to warn you this isn't very good you're not going to you're not going to like this it just doesn't work it doesn't work <laughs> I'm not tell them they'll find it they'll find it soon enough <laughs> And what you were talking backstage, you might be doing a you might be doing a sketch show again for the for the TV. I will hopefully. Um, thank you very much. Cheers. Thank you very much. It's no it's no limit. I didn't want to do a fourth series, right? Because um, I had trouble writing the third series. I didn't come up with any like new characters. Like the second series, I came up with like Larry Forsyth and Raymond Day. But for the third series, I didn't have it new. I thought right, you're starting to fucking run out. So that's it. Just just finish it there. So it's not that I thought. I want to do something that's like my old YouTube stuff and my old, um, uh, like my vines and things like that, but on the telly. And I, yeah. I, BBC said they were into it. But, um, so I was ready to go and do it. And they said, I, oh, wait, wait, no, no, no. <laughs> Just need a bit of, kind of, a wee bit of red tape first. Or like financial folk and legal folk. In case I go out and I start filming things you're not supposed to film, like people on the street or there's a van gone by with a kind of like uh, windy cleaner phone number on it and that's advertising. Yeah. Shit like that, but I was like months ago and it's taking so long and I'm like, I'm fucking tempted to just go out, fuck it, just date on Patreon or something like that, just date and then you'll be able to say cunt, 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 <laughs> cunt, 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 and uh, that's it, just make a whole fucking sketch of that and um, <laughs> maybe more freedom, but I'd like, I'd love to just put that on a telly because I've not seen anything like that where it's just all the homemade stuff and... Yeah, uh, it's a difficult uh, thing to... Um, I don't know if I don't know what people would think because I'm any sort of weirder stuff now. I'm, I'm almost yeah. no into trying to make people laugh as much as you've discovered <laughs> tonight. <laughs> um, you know, like doing all these sort of like as your, your punchline. I like um, I like kind of weird stuff because that's what I'm into myself now. I, yeah. I don't care if something's funny or no or good or no. I just want it to be kind of strange and I've not seen it before. So I can imagine doing something like that and sticking on the telly and again critically panned. <laughs> <laughs> but if you do it yourself, I mean, I think if anyone can do that, make that work on, on the internet with everyone chipping in a pound, it's nearly me, but it probably isn't me. So, you know, I think you people would do that. You could kickstart it or... or, or I, I mean, I wouldn't want to do a big thing. I wouldn't want to go like that, right? You need to give me that 120,000, but you know, that fucking, like, yeah. I just go... Like I did. I like just go, I like, give me some, I like that. <laughs> but, give me just, just, just a few pence, just like maybe 50 pence a month, please, and I'll, I'll make you, you know, if you don't like it, you can, you can, you know, unsubscribe, whatever the fuck it is, but we'll see, see how it goes, but I might be writing another book, so 
I don't, I don't know, but I'd love to do it. I've been thinking about it. I'd love to just make that up and looking at Patreon going, look, what the hell is everybody else doing? And well, that'd be good to have. For, 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 for two dollars, you get this. For four dollars, you get the behind the scenes. <laughs> for 15 dollars, you get to have your name in the credits. And <laughs> for a hundred and hundred dollars, you get to meet me. Wow. <laughs> I would, I would be, I would be worried if, if somebody <laughs> paid for the, you know, the kind of top tier fucking things. Like, I'm getting fucking stabbed here. I'm getting. <laughs> but I gave you a hundred quid. I thought we were pals. <laughs> <laughs> Will you be my dad? <laughs> Fuck that. No, I'll keep it nice and low. <laughs> I also think the short stories. Though, I'd love to see those. Just, you know, I think like a. Those being filmed. Do I've you think? already, I already proposed it. Just like all my other sitcom ideas, they got fucking knocked back. <laughs> I said, would uh, like I went to some, I went to my agent and said, can you see if any production companies or whatever would be interested in going to some channel about like daffy stories, but like film, kind of like like Twilight Zone or something like that, like yeah. Night Gallery that he did after the Twilight Zone, where you got a few stories and an episode. Yeah. And one, only one company was interested, and they thought about it, and they went, nah. <laughs> they just said, we don't want to kill work. It's a sketch show, I, a sitcom, I, this sort of in between thing, no. Yeah, very And nice. I'm just like that. You, you end up getting all these knockbacks. You, you just get all these knockbacks, and, you know, you, 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 know, you, just, you just... You just get all these knockbacks, you know, and... Uh, <laughs> no, oh... <laughs> And it just breaks your wee heart, you know, you, you, you get used to it, though. So, uh, <laughs> so, so I'm kind of almost thinking that with this sketch show thing, what if I get, like, a month down the line, I say, right, so here's the idea and here's what I want to do. The BBC Scotland, and I go, no, forget it. You know, I just don't think I can take that kind of rejection, as George <laughs> McFly would say in Back to the Future. But I genuinely went through that, like, th I had 10 or 15 years of everything getting knocked back, and I, ri and I got to the point where I couldn't, I, I wouldn't bother trying to work hard on anything, because I couldn't bear working hard on something and then them making it good, and then them saying no. Poor, <laughs> but, poor but, fucking us, eh? Uh, but then, <laughs> but us. now I've kind of, I've got over that. I think you kind of I get over it, because also, A, it, we're very lucky to be able to do what we do and do yeah. anything at all. But, uh, and, but also, you've just got to keep, you know, if you keep fucking ploughing away, so eventually someone will go, because that's definitely, you know, uh, what you're saying there is definitely a brilliant show. If you just filmed the four stories at the start of, your, of that second book and even put them all together in one show, well, it, doesn't been, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter that, they're not that connected. That sort of thing, I've been to yeah. doing a kind of, oh, just me and my camcorder, just having a fucking laugh, but, um, but... You could film, you know, you could film those properly with, like, you know, you could make them little short films. They're all, they'd all work really beautifully as properly as properly filmed things. I don't want to film it properly. <laughs> you know, you see comedy programmes and they're all like done you know very very good lenses and fucking prime lenses and shallow depth of field and coloured corrected all looking beautiful and for me that just takes away from the fucking the comedy. It yeah. looks it's like it, it's sort of I don't like it. I just like the whole Vines thing and YouTube stuff sure. and kind of you know mere raw mere fucking raw but like that. Do and, it on, and yeah, it is. Well, do it. You, you can do it yourself then, and you can do it online, and then you're in control of it, and then no one's I, taking I money like off you and taking you. I really like that, but uh, can you imagine doing it and, like, fucking nobody, nobody's in it, and I'm like, right, I go back to the BBC. I used to, no, you're not interested in it. <laughs> fucking hell, man. Um, no, I'd be really, really, really into that. Yeah. Really into that. It'll happen. It'll happen. You're, you're too uh, individual and brilliant a voice. It'll take it'll take some time, yeah. but you'll get. <laughs> no thanks, sorry. Thanks, thanks. Sorry. Okay. All right, I'll ask you one more emergency question, then we're going to have to go. Going to be a good. I'm going to wait. Make a good one. <laughs> All the ones I'm looking at are terrible. <laughs> it goes off towards the. I don't know why I'm looking at the end of the the book because. Uh, how about this? Another. You know, uh, Julian Clary last week backstage said, you're very obsessed with anuses. <laughs> for, uh, it's like all heterosexual men, you're just obsessed with anuses. Aye. And I wanted to say to him, yeah, anuses aren't just for gay people, mate. We can, all, right. we can all enjoy them. That's right. Yeah. Is it all done? <laughs> you're not a lie. But anyway, <laughs> let's leave anuses behind. If you had a finger that could cure rectal cancer, but only if you pushed it hard up the anus of the cancer sufferer, would you cure anyone, everyone, or be like Jesus and just cure a few? Um, just, um, 
just just the sort of good people. Yeah. Um, I would uh, uh, any kind of like say people I didn't agree with politically, I'd let them die. Yeah. Um, <laughs> people I didn't like, or I would anybody maybe who wronged me in primary one or something like that. <laughs> I would see them on Facebook talking about how the, you know the terrible news and all that. I say, well, listen, I've got this ability. <laughs> How about we meet up and then just some about a day go, ah, oh, wait a fucking minute. <laughs> I remember you. <laughs> Bye. Um, I would use it, I would use it for evil rather than for yeah, good. Yeah, okay, good. <laughs> it was good. More people should do that with, the, with their cancer curing fingers. <laughs> that should happen more often. Uh, anyway, look, we're going to have to wrap it up, but it's been uh, fantastic uh, to talk to you. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Uh, and ladies and gentlemen, give a massive round of applause to Libby! <laughs> Thank you very much. We'll be back next week. See you next week with more Brian's. We don't drink. How do you like them sky potatoes? <laughs>